and Wednesday we opened up and we had 150 on the books, 150 res reservations, and we just started getting cancellations like crazy. And we're like, what's going on? What's happening? And we're just having like table of eight, table of six, table of four, and then before we knew it, we had 70 cancellations. Today on Dirty Linen, we are talking to Jesse McTavish, who every time I say his name and I remember that he's not living in Melbourne anymore, I get a little bit mad about the situation. However, it is Jesse's life and he can live wherever he wants. And what he's chosen to do a month ago is open a restaurant in Avalon on Sydney's northern beaches. Now, Bar Elvina, a month ago, it was the culmination of a, a lot of thinking, a lot of planning, a lot of dreaming, and a lot of delicious seafood cooked simply and beautifully and served overlooking those beautiful northern beaches. But over the past week, Jesse, the northern beaches has taken on a little bit of a different tenor and your very fresh young restaurant has had to shut down and transition to takeaway. My goodness, what a ride you're on. Yeah, what a time to be alive. <laughs> Isn't it great? <laughs> it's wild. It's just wild. We certainly didn't expect this to happen. I mean, there was always a chance, but um, but it, it feels quite unreal, that's for sure. It still does. But um, but we're, in a, we're an adaptive bunch of people. <laughs> well, if there's one thing we've seen about um, hospitality people in 2020, it is definitely reinforced the adaptability of the um, brave souls within the, within the industry. But Jesse, tell us about your last month. Tell us about opening Bar Elvina and uh, you know how the last week has struck you. Sure, um, it's been a wild opening. It was it was incredible. We hit the ground um, running. It was the response was was overwhelmingly amazing. Um, I don't know how to, how to really describe it. Andy and I were just blown away. We were absolutely blown away. First of all, how the community accepted us straight away, because it is a really close, tight knit community, very heavily localized, you know, and they're proud of being very, very local. Um, and so Andy lives here, which is fantastic. But I'm a bit of a blow in, so I had to play the Byron Bay card a bit, which <laughs> sort of helps. It's sort of like the sister sister town to Avalon. <laughs> um, so, so I think I was, I was uh, accepted as like a temporary local, <laughs> um, but it was the, the the response was incredible. Just the people came out. It was there's ninety nine percent locals that were coming in, and and each week we were breaking the previous week record, and we're just looking at each other at the end each each week. The the core team, you know, the bar manager, floor manager, head chef, and sous chef, are looking at each other and just going, "Wow, what have we created? This is great. This is fantastic." And of course, we we we're pretty reasonable when we understand that it was the busiest two weeks of the year. Yeah, usually you know, it's Christmas time, and yes, it's going to be busy. But the response was just really flattering and and overwhelmingly great. It was just mm. fantastic. It's so good. And then and then yeah, <laughs> and then something happened. So yes, it was wild. So it's probably a week ago now that we first heard about those two cases on the northern beaches. Did the and it was in Avalon, which is where you are. So did you instantly think, uh oh, um, we should, you know, get concerned, or did you did it not really sort of hit you as um yeah, particularly striking news? I think Andy was much more um aware of the the gravity of it uh right away. Because he's been through it with Prince of York over in York Street, um, his other venue, um, a while ago, the beginning of the pandemic, and and so he went straight away. He goes, he went straight into worst case scenario mode, which is fantastic. Because I'm like, oh, it should be all right, you know, what's what's going on, you know, trying to just to, to try to positive in it. And he was really realistic about it, which was which was which really helped, um, because then I, I realised the gravity of it once he so being so you know so seeing how serious it was. And knowing that it was so close to home, you know, literally it's a small, small little suburb, and and we're like, oh wow, okay, we need to do something. It, it was halfway through, it was mid through service. We, we were opening on the Wednesday night, and we'd shut Monday, Tuesday, and weren't here, which was you know, we didn't realise how how lucky we were for that, you know, because that was when a bunch of the cases were happening. We we were shut, the venue was shut, and Wednesday we open up, and we had 150 on the books, 150 reserve, reservations. And we just started getting cancellations like crazy. And we're like, what's going on? What's happening? And we're just having like table of eight, table of six, table of four. And then before we knew it, we had 70 cancellations. 
and we still hadn't still hadn't figured out what was going on. And then then a, uh, one of the guests came up and told us what what has happened, and we went, "Oh my goodness!" Um, so that was, so we we basically reacted straight away, shut the doors straight away, um, got our COVID um, login our check ins uh, for contact tracing, got our got the schedule out ready to go to give it to any any authorities that needed it. But thankfully. In Touchwood, we haven't um, been on that list, which is fantastic. Um, we were very vigilant about it. We have been since day one, and and it, there was probably a little bit of complacency that's, that's crept in around Australia, especially in Sydney, just like oh, it's all done. Um, and, and and no one's to blame about that. I think it was you know we stopped seeing ads about COVID on TV as well. You know, like <laughs> there was I think just, just the whole nation we started think, gearing up for Christmas. And uh, in a holiday season, and hanging out with our families again. Um, so it was, uh, yeah. So it was, and then uh, as soon as it happened, we, wow. we just went right, shut the doors straight away. We, so, we, we so you'd had seventy cancellations. You cancelled the others yourselves and just went into crisis management mode, right? That's right. Yeah, we can't cancelled another three hundred fifty bookings. So it was a total of total of bookings up to. To over past New Year's Eve is it's around about seven hundred eight hundred bookings, which is pretty pretty devastating. So you were ahead of the <laughs> mandated shutdown, which um it, it was a what was it like a three or four day shutdown through to Wednesday night. But you you I guess went beyond that. So you even if you were allowed to open, um, let's say before New Year, you you wouldn't. No, no way. And it was it's not a yeah. There's a couple of reasons we're gonna. We we really we know how we know the severity of this pandemic. We know how serious it is. We don't want to look like we're taking it lightly. Um, and you know, for for us, we're in it for the long haul. Yeah, you know, Andy and I are here. We've got a great long lease, and we're in it for the long haul. We're we're not here for a, for a short time. It's just a bump in the road, and we, we're looking at that. We're looking, keeping the big picture in mind, mm. keeping that positive attitude up. And you've swung pretty quickly into doing takeaway. It, it, was that were you starting completely fresh with that, or as you were sort of building the business, was that something that you thought that you might do at some point, or that you might have to do because there was another outbreak? We we didn't actually, and I mean, um, I mean, Andy had done it before with Prince York, which was which was helpful, but um, but we we didn't think we honestly we, we thought that we would have been okay. We didn't think we thought I oh, would we'll do a takeaway. It couldn't be that hard, I suppose, in some ways. But then it's a quite a quite a challenge. But then I think Andy became a web developer overnight. <laughs> He's like, there's a crash course in crash course in setting up an e-commerce page. It was great. But um, I, I went over to the fish markets, got a bunch of fish off my suppliers, some seafood. Um, my my fiance Ali took takes great photos. She, she, we came back and did a quick shoot of all the all the footy, all the, all the seafood. Then we met with all, with the the staff that. We don't, sorry, pardon me. We all went and got tested first. That was the first thing we did. All of us, all, all of our, all the call staff, as full time staff members, we said everyone go get tested, regardless, of, regardless of what's going on. And so we all went and got tested. All got cleared. Then we came back and had a meeting about the takeaways. Right. Um, and now I, I'd encourage anyone listening to this to go back and listen to the origin story of Bar Elvina on my sibling podcast, Deep in the Weeds, where you had a great chat to Huck about how the restaurant started. But for people who don't know anything about Bar Elvina and they don't know who this Andy is that you keep mentioning, can you just give us <laughs> a little 101? <laughs> of course. So Andy Emerson, who was the A in Acme. That's probably the best way to describe it. But, he's, but more than that, he's, he's one of the best mates. He's unreal, and he and I have got along for a long time. He's he's one of the one of the core industry guys that I've respected over the years, and and happens to be, you know, happens to like wine and fishing and all the stuff that I like too. And we get along really well. It's great. Great. And what's the focus of the restaurant? Uh, it's definitely seafood. Definitely, there's a seafood focus. Just, but it's it's a bit more than that. It's just, it's just like a, your local local uh, suburb restaurant. That I mean, you use, you use a lot of local produce, a lot of stuff out of the sand dunes and that type of stuff, and a lot, all heap, there is a fair bit of seafood cooked out of charcoal. Um, but it's there's no it's there's no strict rules of, of the venue. It feels like you just come in, you can have a you can have a couple of snacks and a couple of margaritas if you want to, and then come back the next night and have a full meal if you want to. But there's 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 no real. You don't feel like you're locked into anything. It's, it's, it's almost like um, 
it's fully customizable. You know what I mean? It's it's in the sections. Well, even even the, even physically how it's laid out, there is a separate bar. There's a front terrace, and then there's a dining room, um, which could 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 be kind of you know too structured, but it just gets blurred every time. Every night we're busy. It's unreal. You have a group doing shots in the bar, and then a group out the front having a Christmas party, and then inside there'd be some, a couple having a romantic dinner. It's kind of cool to have this diversity across the venue. And that's what we sort of like about mm, it. So nice. You can dress up or you can come in super daggy. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I get the feeling that Avalon's the kind of neighbourhood where the locals will let you know, you know, what they want their restaurants to be and they, what they'll, let, they'll let you know what they love and, you know, what, what doesn't really work for them. So what have you found that people have responded to most strongly, whether it's a dish or, um, or there's something about the style of service or perhaps a drink? I think the, um, the, the response has been... The, po- the positive response is being from the fact that we just offer something completely different of the, to what's around. We're giving, and, it, and it's a reasonable price, so you, you're not you don't feel locked into one sort of style of eating or dining, um, or one style of style of booze. You can we've got some really cool wines by the pool, on the pool, the cool varieties and styles on the pool, which you wouldn't get anywhere else on the beaches, which is kind of cool. Um, I think that's that's what they're liking about is that we're just offering something that no one else offers and. And it's not pretentious. It's just fun and fun and boozy and relaxed. Sounds good. It must be so strange, you know. You 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 built it basically yourselves. You opened it. It got smashed. Everyone loved it, and suddenly that room is 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 quiet. I mean, what does it feel like to just you know smash into a brick wall like this? It was pretty weird. And Andy and I were sitting um, in the bar that three days ago. We're sitting sitting in the bar by ourselves, and we're like. This is the first time we've sat in the bar for six weeks. <laughs> so I've actually got to sit down and enjoy the place. We're like, it's a really nice space. Like, <laughs> as a customer, it'd be really good. Seeing they're having a wine with each other, going, "What are we going to do? How are we going to plan this?" It was pretty wild. At the first, it was, it was really, it was quite unreal. And then it was a little bit of like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> and then, and then, it, then it's gone into, "Okay, no, let's let's try and change this around." And and we know that the. Um, the local community and Northern Beaches community are incredibly supportive of someone who gives it a crack, and so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to give it a good crack. We're not we're not going to shut the doors and, and go, ah, oh, well, you know, we tried. Um, we're going to give it a really good crack. Yeah, well, it's interesting for me to hear you say that you're there for the long haul because, I mean, you've moved around a lot over the past, I don't know, years. When I met you, you were working in Melbourne. You were really um, turning cafe food well, I won't say upside down. I'd say you were taking cafe food to a new place and a new level um, at uh, Top Paddock and um, then, you know, other other ventures with Nathan Tolman and, and that crew. Um, and But I guess the ocean always called you, didn't it? And I think Melbourne perhaps was a, a, a tricky place for you to be for too many years. It was, yeah. I, I mean, I love... I love. I always say people go, "How you know, do you love Melbourne?" I say, yeah, absolutely love Melbourne. But I love. I love the coast. The Victorian coastline is is so incredible. It's cold water paradise. It's just stunning. The amount of adventure and and how remote and rough and and how how uh, rugged it is. And I'd, I'd love the the adventure on that coastline. It's because it's undiscovered still. There's so many undiscovered spots. Um, but that you can't work on that coastline for long. <laughs> you can't exactly work at Bem River and <laughs> Cape Conran, and then and so and so you'd have to really work in the city, and, and the city was fantastic. I love I love Melbourne as a city; it's unreal, absolutely unreal, and the people. Um, but it was I, there was something about the East Coast. I, was, I knew I was going to get back to eventually, and then just trying to find my feet back in on the in Sydney. It's it's a tough one because there are so many spots, and just finding the right business partner as well. That's always been a challenge for me, and um, and it's. And it, this time, I think we've got it right, which is really lovely. It's a really lovely feeling. It only took 41 years that you got there. <laughs> this is the first place you've owned, is it? I've owned, I was, I was part owner with the with the group down in, um, the Mulberry Group down in, in Melbourne at Kettle Black. Um, and I've been an owner of a couple of others um, along the way. But this is the first time where it's where it's 50-50, just the two of us. And it feels feels so good. Whereas this, this is two people answering every question and solving each issue and that you know, you have the tough conversations and you can have them because it's just the two of you. Um, that's that's what makes makes it a lot a lot easier. Feel comfortable for the first time. 
Wow. I mean, that is amazing. Like, it's amazing that you're in that situation and um, you've got a pandemic to deal with. But I guess um, it's good that you can just sit down between the two of you and, and work out how to play this crazy situation. Absolutely. And that, that's, I think that shows the reasonableness of, of Andy. Maybe a little bit, I've probably matured a fair bit since those old days. And it's just nice to have that, be able to do that. It's the, the one I want. And, and, and I think going through these challenges is... It's so much, much, so much better for a relationship, especially for um for Andy and I. You know, we can we can look back when the things are, when times are good. Then we can go, yeah, right. We went we went through a pandemic. Remember, <laughs> we we opened a place and shut a place and reopened a place. <laughs> we can deal with anything. <laughs> yeah, it's right. <laughs> we think we got this. Yeah. So after this, I guess the shock of um everything changing so quickly. How are you feeling about things rolling out after New Year? Uh, I'm very nervous. I think I think it's honestly. I think probably a, it's going to be at least a month. But I don't know. That's just that's just thinking. I mean, the numbers came down today again, which is promising. But um, but we're trying to think of the worst case scenario for it, and see how we're going to adapt. And with the takeaway that we launched last night at about nine o'clock, we scrambled and scrambled and scrambled. It's, the response has been fantastic, um, and we're just trying to offer some, a really basic offering at the start and it, we'll see how the response goes. If the response is good, if the response is positive, then we'll, we'll move it into other, you know, bro- widen the menu, widen the offering, broaden the offering for it. But um, And then we'll just see, we'll go from there. I mean, honestly, we, again, we, we do have a, a very reasonable landlord, which helps. Um, so we'll see. We might not be reasonable if it lasts six months, but <laughs> we'll see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely a day at a time and a week at a time at the moment, isn't it? So I, I, I hope those numbers keep coming down and, uh, yeah, sit, or, sit at zero. That would be nice. Um, but, Jesse, it's, uh, yeah, really great to catch up with you at this very interesting juncture in Barry Alvina's young life. But I, uh, it's great to hear that you're going to be there for the long haul and I can't wait to um, get up there and try out this interesting wine of which you speak yeah to mention absolutely the, yeah thanks great Sammy. local seafood <laughs> but yeah, yeah all the best thanks a lot take care bye this is dirty linen and i'm danny valent we air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about we spend a week thrashing around each issue hearing from different people with unique perspectives we want to hear from you as well If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This is a Deep in the Weeds production. It's, yeah, it's a really tricky one because, you know, from a government point of view, I can... (laughs) 